Hello, Math Humans. We're going to do 3.3b today. We're going to be doing more with our first derivative test. Our objectives are that we're going to continue managing the first derivative test to find intervals of increasing and decreasing and extrema. So for our first example, it says find the relative extrema in intervals of increasing and decreasing by using the first derivative test. So there is my function. This is going to be harder to take the derivative of, so I'm going to rewrite this as x to the fourth over x to the second plus 1 over x to the second. So if I simplify that, <clears throat> I'm going to get x squared plus x to the negative 2, and that's going to make my derivative a little bit easier to do. So now if I take my first derivative, I'm going to get 2x minus 2x to the negative 3, and I'm going to write this as 2x minus 2 over x cubed. I'm going to put these two together because that will make the math easier. So I'm going to multiply this by x cubed over x cubed. Put my little equals in there. And I'm going to get 2x to the fourth minus 2 over x cubed. Okay. Now I can set that equal to 0. When I cross multiply, this denominator is going to go away but I'm still going to have this be one of the zeros that I consider. So I'm going to write x is equal to 0. And then if I have 2x to the 4th equals 2 and x to the 4th equals 1, then I'm going to get x is equal to plus or minus 1. So the three critical points that I'm going to check are plus or minus 1 and 0. This is kind of a weird mass anomaly, and even though technically when you cross multiply this x goes away, it still often generates that extra critical value of x is equal to 0. So for me, I like to sign charts. If you like to do the table, you may. I just particularly have an affinity for sign charts for whatever reason. So I'm going to choose my test values negative 10, negative 1 half, positive 1 half, and 10. Remember that I'm really only interested in the signs. I'm going to evaluate f prime of a negative 10. And then this is where I'm evaluating my function. And I'll just evaluate it from here because this is the derivative. <clears throat> in the numerator, it's going to be positive. In the denominator, it's negative. Therefore, this is a negative. So I'm going to put a negative slope. And then I'm going to evaluate f prime of a negative 1, same thing, a negative 1. So this is going to be 2 minus 2. Alrighty, that's a 0. f a negative half, I have a negative divided by a negative is a negative. Sorry, it's a positive. Whew, bad math. And then I'm going to do f of, oh, that's why. That's a zero. That's my bet mistake. Here's f of a half. Okay, when I evaluate f of a half, I'm going to get a negative in the numerator, a positive in the denominator, so this one is decreasing. And then if I evaluate the 10, and these are all evaluated in the derivative, at 10 I'm going to get a positive. Okay, I'm going to get a positive divided by a positive is a positive, <clears throat> and there's my function. All right. If you'll pay attention, I have a horizontal tangent here, a horizontal tangent here, and a horizontal tangent here. So I would say f of x is decreasing, and I'm just going to start with decreasing because that is the interval that happens first from a negative infinity to a negative 1, and then it's going to decrease again from 0 to 1, and then f of x is going to increase from a negative 1 to 0 unioned with 1 to positive infinity. Okay. Um, for the extrema portion, I'm going to write f of x has a minimum at x is equal to decreasing to increasing is a minimum at a negative 1. And then I have another minimum at a positive 1. And then the function f of x has a maximum at x is equal to 0. So they're actually kind of cool problems. The sign chart can be really helpful. As the chapter goes on, we will add multiple sign charts. All right. 
Here is our second example. And in this one, it says determine the open intervals for which F is increasing and decreasing and identify extrema. And of course, we need to bring in some trig to make sure that we're practicing our trig. So if I take my derivative, the derivative of sine is cosine. So I'm going to get radical 3 cosine of x. The derivative of cosine is a negative sine x. And we're going to set that equal to 0. So this is a little bit unique to solve. I'm going to take this guy to the other side. So I have radical 3 cosine of x is equal to the sine of x. I'm going to divide by cosine. So I get radical 3 is the sine of x over the cosine of x. And this is the tangent of x. And then this is radical 3 over 1. Okay. So <clears throat> tangent is positive in the first and third quadrants. Tangent is y over x, so this is going to be pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, this is 4 pi over 3, okay? And then we're also going to make sure that we test, we can't go past our endpoints, right? So I'm going to use these because it's a closed interval to put on my sign chart. So this is my derivative. I'm going to have a 0. My first critical value is pi over 3. My next critical value is 4 pi over 3. And then the last one is 2 pi. And again, it's because it's a closed interval. So now I'm going to evaluate the, the derivative. And I'm going to choose pi over 6. This is 60, so that's a 30. In between pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3, I'm going to choose pi. And then between 4 pi over 3 and 2 pi, I'm going to choose 3 pi over 2, just because the math is easy. All right, so I'm going to evaluate my derivative at pi over 6. And the tangent of pi over 6, sorry, I'm going to evaluate it, I think, from here. Okay, and so just to set this up once, this is going to be radical 3 times the cosine of pi over 6 minus the sine of pi over 6. Okay, pi over 6 is a 30. So this is 30. This is 1 radical 3 and 2. So it's going to be a radical 3. The cosine is positive, okay? And then minus a positive. And this is just a half. So this one is going to be positive net effect. Remember, I don't care what the value is. I just want the positive. And I add that in my first interval. Then I'm going to evaluate the derivative at pi. So it's going to be radical 3 times the cosine of pi minus the sine of pi. The cosine of pi is a negative 1, so this is a negative radical 3 minus the sine of pi is 0, right? So this is negative. This guy is decreasing. And then I'll come over here, f prime of 3 pi over 2, and this one's going to be positive. And I'm assuming you can do the math to get there, okay? So again, I'm going to have a horizontal tangent here, and I'm going to have a horizontal tangent down here. So if I answer the first question, F is, <clears throat> that's an is, increasing, and it's going to be from 0 to pi over 3, and then it's going to be increasing from 4 pi over 3 to 2 pi, okay? And then F is decreasing from pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3. And then f has a maximum at x is equal to pi over 3. And f has a minimum at x is equal to 4 pi over 3. Now remember, there's two ways that you can report your extrema. You could say f has a maximum at pi over 3 and f of pi over 3, and you could report that way. Either is okay. You always want to just check to make sure the way the problem is written that you don't have to report a point if you're choosing this. All right, my dears, that is it for today. I will see you soon. Made it under 10 minutes. Woohoo!